Once upon a time, camps lined the Batcher, all along the great crescent of river that gives New Orleans its nickname. After the historic flood of 1927, the Army Corps of Engineers decided to enlarge the levees, and almost all the camps, teetering on their pilings, had to go. So what we have now is a little appendix of about a dozen houses up there, which are the remnants of what once uh, lined the banks of the river from downtown New Orleans all the way up here to the Paris, a good six, seven miles. For his book, Down on the Badger, Tulane environmental law professor Oliver Howe spent a lot of time exploring its history. He came across a landmark case from the early 1800s that decided the fundamental question, who owns the Badger? The end of it was, the American idea won. This was pride in and that eliminated the publicness of the Badger. So the Batcher is private property, but who owns it? A New Orleans lawyer named Ashton O'Dwyer Jr. has been fighting in the courts for years to prove that his family is the rightful owner of this riparian neighborhood. To refresh your recollection, my family owns some Batcher property on the east bank of the Mississippi River at the convergence of Monticello Avenue, Oak Street, Leak Avenue, and River Road. And as unbelievable as it may seem, uh, there are 12 structures that have been, quote, permitted, close quote, on our property, uh, and which are inhabited by squatters and trespassers. Now, these 12 groups of squatters and trespassers, including LP&L, that acquired a right-of-way to put up a huge uh, power uh, tower on our property, uh, they didn't get there on their own. They've been aided and abetted by past and present parish presidents, council members, and others. It's just a fact of life. <laughs> 